Hello, welcome to Mr. Paul's Pantry. I'm Mr. Paul. Nice to see you all here again. And if you're new, a very warm welcome. Now, the recipe today is a very, very simple and quick one. Uh, it's, it's devised originally years ago because in the bakery, we got fed up and absolutely cheesed off with the mince pie business at Christmas. First of all, it's a once a year thing in the bakery and your time was full all year round. But when it came to mince pie time, you just didn't have time. So we used to put on extra staff, we did extra hours, we worked in the nights, and even all that, we still never had enough. They were soul destroying, absolutely soul destroying. I've gone home many, many Christmas Eves without a mince pie for the family, many, many times. So I make this, uh, I've made this for the, for the home a few times, a few years now, and I'm going to pass it on to you. I notice on television, two people I've seen making it, um, it's re reminded, this is what reminded me to do it. Uh, I saw them making it, and I've been making it for years, it's nothing new. But it's a mince meat slice. Instead of individual pies, it's a slice. Like you have almond slices, then it's a mince meat slice. And it's very simple to make, very, very tasty. And of course, you do one, and it serves a lot of people. So you're not fiddling about putting lids on and spooning uh, mincemeat into tins, having it boiling all over the tins and everything. So this is a very simple recipe. Okay, the recipe will be underneath the video. Please don't write and ask me how, how much of this and how much of that. The recipe is always underneath. Just scroll down under the beef video and it'll say show more. Click on that and the recipe is there. Failing that, you go onto my website there's a search box, type in mincemeat, and it'll come up instantly from my website. So, simple, okay? Let's get on with it, let's do it. The ingredients I'm going to use for this uh, pastry, this is a pastry I only use for this, Sometimes I've used it in the past for mince pies, but it's a very short pastry, so <clears throat> it's not easy to, to handle. So when we're making large quantities in the bakery, um, that's something we needed to try and avoid. I'm going to use the food processor today, but you can make it by hand like you make any other pastry. And I'm only making it by the food processor because of the arthritis in my hands, that's all. They're pretty bad today. Okay, so first of all is in goes the flour. And we have, the flour is um, 175 grams of flour. There's icing sugar there, which is uh, 25 grams of icing sugar. And then the butter, there's 100 grams of butter. Now I've cubed that, it's very, very hard. It's just come out of the fridge. And it's best when you use it hard, when you're using a food processor, and then it doesn't all stick to the sides. If it's too soft, it'll just stick to the sides. So that goes in as well. All of it. <clears throat> there we are. And we're going to give that a little whiz together now, first. And we're going to whiz that until it looks like sand or breadcrumbs. I think that's looking nice, just a minute. It's only, it's very, very quick. So there we are. Uh, I'm going to put in now the beaten egg. Now I've got one beaten egg here. I don't want to use it all. I'm going to try and keep about a tablespoon of it back just for glazing the top of it before we finish. Before we bake it, sorry. In we go with that. I think I'm going to need a little bit more of that egg. I've kept quite a bit back. Just a little smidgy more. And that should do it. And as, as soon as you see it start doing this, clumping together, it's ready. Any more, take out the blade. 
and I'll just pop that on the bench and show you what it looks like. There it is. So that's the pastry and all we need to do with it now is push it together. It doesn't need kneading at all, not, we're not making bread, we just want to push it together into a nice, pick up all the bits and pieces that are there, into a nice ball of pastry. You can see, there we are, it's come together nicely. Now that's going to rest in the fridge now for about 30 minutes. We're not cooling it or chilling it, we're resting it. I'm leaving it in the fridge so the butter doesn't melt too soft and makes it difficult to handle. But what we're doing in the fridge is we're actually letting the, pe the uh, flour relax. Because once we start mixing with this, or by hand, you start to develop the gluten in the flour, like we do when we're making bread. And that's what we don't want with pastry. It wants to be nice and short and not stretchy. So you can see how short it is there. It doesn't stretch at all. It just breaks. Okay? So we're going to pop that in the fridge, and <clears throat> I'll be back shortly. Now, we come to the pastry base etc. This is the tin I'm going to use. It's a loose bottom tin. Uh, it's a tin I've had for a long time. Uh, don't ask me where yeah, I bought it from because I probably bought it in the UK back in the 1960s or early 70s. I can't remember. But I'm sure things like this are available online. But you don't have to use this sort of tin if you don't want. You can make it in any shape tin. In, in fact, I've made it in a square tin like this before, which is 7 inches by 7 inches, and uh, then cut it into slices like that. So there's no need to go out and buy special tins for most things. There are exceptions to the rule, but for most things you don't need to do that. Just put those away. So my tin, this one if you want to know, is 36 centimetres by 12 centimetres and it has a loose bottom uh, and it is a tin I use quite often for making shortbreads in and then cutting it into fingers. I've got it into a rectangle shape, it's been in the fridge cooling. I'm going to roll it out now. Now I do that just to start it off because if I start rolling straight away it'll start cracking down the side and I don't want that to happen at this stage. So now we can start to roll gently backwards and forwards towards you and away from you. Turn the pastry round backwards and forwards and away from you. Towards you and away from you like that. Keep the pastry on the move always so it doesn't stick. There we are. Now <clears throat> I'll just put a little bit more flour in there. Now remember this is a very short pastry so it's very very delicate. What we need to do is to try and get it to the right length for the tin. Let's try that first of all. Well it's almost there. Just needs a little bit more for the turn up each side and at the ends. I'll just turn that round to keep it a little bit longer and then move the tin and I'm just going to make it a little bit wider. Now, I think that should do it. Let's have a see. Yes, I think that's perfect. So what we do now is we fold the sides in like that and lift the whole thing into the tin. Then we can open the sides, pushing it gently into the corner. If you're one of those ladies or even gentlemen who has long fancy nails, take a bit of pastry like this from the edge and push that in there into the corners instead of pushing your nails through the pastry. 
and it won't stick to the pastry because it's the same sort of mixture. Okay, I don't need to do that because I haven't got long nails. So that's going to go right the way around, right into the edges. And then we're going to put the rolling pin over the top, like that. And that will trim off any excess for us. So there's the tin filled, nice and neat. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut out one or two stars with this little cutter. We don't need a lot, just for a bit of decoration at the end. Now for this, I'm going to use some of my homemade mincemeat. Now you don't have to make your own mincemeat. In fact, I stopped doing it a long time ago. I did make this because I was making some for a friend and I had some left over. So but what you can do is, and it's very, very nice, you can buy a good quality mincemeat from the store, from the shop, and dolly it up with a chopped apple, chopped apricots, um, a, a few things like that, a little chopped up bits of pineapple, anything will dolly it up like that, as long as you don't put a lot of wet things in it to make it too wet. That's the main thing, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to fill this, this case with the mincemeat. Now, this is my next little twist. I told you how what a bind the mince pies were to make in the shop. Um, and I tried to school people into buying this instead of a lot of mince pies for a few years. I never really succeeded, I've got to admit. So there we are, that's filled now. Now what we're going to do next is I've got some... Oh, here it is. I've got some marzipan which I made for decorating a cake last week and I had some left so I've grated it the marzipan, just grate it on an ordinary box grater and I'm going to put some of that on the top this will give a real kick nice taste cut through the actual over sweetness of the mince sometimes because although it's got sugar in it this it's, uh, uh, this is the texture that helps so I'm going to put that all over there, go into the corners a little bit, that's the grated, and then next we're going to take these little stars and we're just going to plonk them here and there, no particular place, just to make the thing look Christmassy, that's all. Like that. I think you can see that okay. Now this is the bit of egg wash that we kept back from, from the pastry because we didn't need it all in the pastry. And I'm just going to go over those stars with a little egg just to give them a lift when they're cooking. Now there we are. Now this is going to go into the oven at uh, one, uh, 180, is it 180? Yes, it's going to go into the oven at 180 uh, and um, I don't use a fan as I've told you before. If you use a fan oven you'll have to try and work it out for yourself because they all, they're all different. It's usually about 20 degrees different, lower. but. Don't take that for granted because I got a lot of complaints when I told people that before. So it's going to 180 and we're going to cook it now for 25 minutes. And it'll come out looking absolutely delightful and then we'll finish it off with a little icing sugar. So I'll come back when that's cooked. Well, here it is. I left it in the tin for about 10 minutes before removing it. And that's the final result. So here we are, 
take a nice piece from here and pop it on there. Yeah, that looks delightful, beautiful. Move that over there. And now all this needs is a, you can serve this with a dollop of fresh cream, creme fraiche, which I'm going to use because I think the tang of the creme fraiche just takes the edge off the sweetness of the mince. I'm also, uh, you can also serve it with brandy butter or even, um, uh, brandy cream, whichever, whichever, whichever you wish. Okay, so I'm just going to have a dollop of creme fraiche with it, just, just as I would with a mince pie. And there we are. I think that looks very, very nice and appetising, uh, uh, <clears throat> and I hope you have a go making it. Well, this is Mr. Paul saying bye for now. And if you haven't subscribed, go underneath, see the red button, subscribe, and you'll see a little bell icon. Click on that and YouTube will tell you every time I put up a new video. If you want to leave a comment, questions or um, suggestions, then go underneath, leave those. I do read them all and I do try to answer as many as I possibly can. So, Mr. Paul saying bye for now, and I'll see you next time. Bye.